are going to talk about special purpose file system and scrap memory. But before that, don't forget to press that subscribe button and the like button too. Okay, so <clears throat> in the last video, if you remember, when we did mount command, you see there were a lot of file system which you see apart from the one which we created and mounted, right? So file system like uh, proc on slash proc, tempfs on dev shm, sysfs on sysfs. So these are the, basically the special purpose file system. So okay, so not all the file system in Linux are basically used as a storage device or a storage point. I mean for your files, right? Some file system just serve as a system interface. Uh, for example, like uh, they provide you more information about system, kernel diagnostics. So just going forward in the video, I'll show you what I mean. Right. In this video, uh, we are going to talk about the two special purpose file system. So this, I mean, we, I wanted to talk about three, but uh, one we have already covered when we were talking about devices, which is sysfs. So you can just go back and watch that video. So sysfs is another special purpose file system. In this video, we are going to talk about proc and uh, tempfs. So let me just do uh, mount again. So you can see that proc is mounted on slash proc. Let me just clear my screen and let's go inside slash proc. So this actually gives you a lot of information about processes, kernel diagnostic, about your system, what's going on in your system, uh, things like that. So, so PROC basically stand for processes. So let's do an ls-lrt over here and you'll see there are a lot of directories, probably some of them will not make sense to you, but it gives you a good uh, impression of your system. And you see these directories with numbers, right? So these are basically the processes which are running. These are basically the PIDs of the running processes currently, which are currently being run on your system. So if you want information about any particular system, a uh, particular process, so you just need to grab its PID, come inside the proc uh, slash proc and look for that PID and you can find a lot of information about a particular process. So first, first let's see what the uh, system diagnostic it, uh, it basically presents to you uh, proc file system so let's just do let me clear my screen let's do uh, so there's if you need information about your memory so there's a file called meminfo and this is actually very detailed description of what's happening in your memory right what's free what's available what's been cached and there are a lot of things so probably you just want to google what a particular thing would mean like vm alloc chunk you can see this is pretty big number so you would want to know what is this right so things like that let's see what else is there so there's a file called cpu info which gives you current state of your cpu and it basically gives all the information cpu family model number number cache size core id number of cores your cpu has right things like that so you can just explore this uh, file system uh, talking about any particular process so let me just do an ls lrt and let me grab a process id let's go to this and we'll cd into this directory and let's do so you can see there's a lot of information about this process itself right uh, even i have never personally explored all the these things about a particular process so let's just do it right now so since this is a file let's see what's there in this file okay so probably erasing out for some reason let's see what's there in the mount so mount info probably is the file which we'll look for okay so this is probably giving you some information about what is being what has been mount and where so doesn't looks very uh, informative i mean you can get that information anywhere else let's see what other information we can grab from here so uh, there is actually a file in this uh, thing it is called environment yes 
so this basically has the information about all the environment variables which are used by this process current and i have actually done a video where you can change an environment variable of a running process so probably you should just go and watch that okay so this was about the proc file system let's just go back to our home directory and let's talk about tempfs so tempfs basically lets you use memory and swap like this makes uh, file access really fast right and yeah that is all about to know my about tempfs i mean there's nothing much in the tempfs it basically lets you uh, lets you use your memory as a storage i mean but that is very temporary right so you i mean and your tempfs size cannot be more than the size of your actual memory so if you do a df h you can see there are bunch of tempfs file systems which are already there they are mounted on run there is some are mounted on sysfsc groups so these kind of uh, basically these uh, processes require a very quick access right that is why they are mounted on tempfs that is why they are using tempfs uh, if you want to create your own tempfs uh, it's very simple so you don't need to create any file system or anything you just need to do a one mount command uh, the file system is created on the run when you run the mount command so let's see that so it's basically mount hyphen t tempfs so we're giving the file system type which is tempfs hyphen o is to give the size so let's create the size of say 20 mb tempfs say tempfs and where do i want to mount it okay so before doing that i need to create a mount point for this right so i'll create a directory mkdir uh, temp and there this is where i'm going to mount my temp effect. so let's do that command again mount hyphen t temp fs hyphen o size equal 20 m then fs slash 10 so run it so your temp fs is created and mounted so if you do a df hyphen h again you can see we just created a temp fs of 20 mb and it is mounted on the temp uh, i mean it has very limited uh, use cases i mean applications which require very fast access so probably that those things you can uh, store in your tempfs but that is also very temporary so it basically it removes any file any thing inside it when it's rebooted like it says tempfs that is why uh, the content just get deleted whenever the system reboots so you cannot keep the content permanently in tempfs all right so let's now talk about uh, swap so swap is basically augmentation of ram on the disk right so if you i mean don't have enough actual memory uh, ram so you can basically assign a part of your disk as ram that is what all swap is about so and this is basically taken care by the linux virtual file system which is running in the kernel so that virtual file system makes this happen for you uh, technically you can even use a file as a swap so I'll show you how to use a file as a swap but first what we are going to do is we are going to create a file system and use that as swap okay so let's do an lsplk so if you remember I had a disk I added a disk to my virtual machine in the last video and mounted created a file system so I've deleted all that file system and now this disk is available to us so let's just go to f -taste and there sdb what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a file system so let's just do new it will be primary and just press enter 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 all right here the things change a little so by default this partition has a identifier of a, a normal partition right but for linux 
swap the partition the identifier is different so if i do p over here right so it gives me to list all the hex code so now i'm going to do an l and if you see the identifier for linux swap is 82 right so this is what the identifier which we need for this file system so let's just type 82 and press enter now our file system has been changed from linux to linux swap right now just write this to the partition table and we are good over here so let's clear the screen and now we are going to format this so to format a swap file system the command is different it's mk swap and the partition which we created is dev sdb1 right so it's formatted now before moving further let's just check the current status of our memory let's just do free hyphen m so it gives a better or rather free hyphen g so you can see we have a one gig of memory currently right now to activate the swap so there's a command called swap on and i'll give the device name devsdb1 so just enter so our swap is activated now so now if i run free hyphen g so you can see that swap has changed from 1 GB to 9 GB because our partition was of 8 GB so it has added the additional 8 GB to that existing 1 GB. The total swap space for us is now 9 GB right. But this is also temporary I mean because once you reboot your system this mount will go. So to permanently mount your swap you would use the same thing which we did in our last video that is use the fstab file and probably this you can take as an exercise for yourself to mount this file system using fstab so permanently mount this swap uh, using fstab all right uh, last thing i wanted to show you is how to use a file as swap so let's just quickly do that use file as a swap first we'll create a file of a particular size using dd command so the command to do that is basically this so you dd you give the input as the device zero uh, output file is you will be your swap file so let's just call it my swap this is the block size and this is then the count right so once you do that so i'm not going to do it because I don't want to create a file system of a file but this is the command which you do after you have this file uh, the operations are pretty similar to what we did with the file system that you will go you are going to do make swap uh, with this right once you do that this file system would be created and then you do swap on slash my swap and then your uh, basically swap would be activated and to mount this you will do the same thing using the fs tab okay so i think this is it for this video guys uh, i hope you like the video you learned something new and probably you have a better understanding of swap and special type of file system and what they do okay so yeah this is it for this video please subscribe to the channel and keep watching